what's going on there guys good morning good afternoon it is the earth master back here on this uh thursday september 14th 2023 that's about 11:09 a.m california time latest quake shows some movement here into the northern edge of the uh right around the cascadia subduction zone here off the coast of the canada region that's uh, one of the latest earthquakes usgs not picking up on that uh up here but it uh, looks like uh, a little bit of activity stirring up there. Let's see what the EMSC models are reporting on this earthquake that's just coming in within the last hour. Uh, we're going to go here to the world map just real quick. Double check that. And it uh, looks like there is definitely a little bit of activity stirring up here off the coast of Vancouver Island, Canada region. Coming in at about 10 kilometers deep. Now this area, of course, is associated with the Cascadia subduction zone, which sits right over here. Looks like there's a little bit of swarming going on here. I uh, had a 3.7, was there two 3.7s there? Possibly, and um, 4.0. So slight uptick occurring up here. Again, that's just gonna be right about in uh, this area right about here. Looks like that may be just off the Queen Charlotte Sound area. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, for some movement. Definitely been a, an interesting day here so far in earthquake activity. Um, looking at the USGS map here shows very minimal movement out here across the western Pacific. Look at that. After days of activity here, I've seen some large-scale movement across the region. It has gone completely quiet. And in times like this, we definitely need to watch areas across the eastern portion of the Pacific Plate. That's when things seem to get uh, on the elevated side uh, looking at the west coast for right now got uh, earthquake off the coast of long beach santa Ana area 2.1 coming in within the last 10 minutes uh, another earthquake or two up around the little lake area this is outside of ridgecrest this is that fault system that's seen that uh, series of quakes back on july 4th and july 5th of 2019 uh, minimal earthquake activity here across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. The Elsinore Fault sits over here, runs through the Marietta area. Looks like there's a handful of smaller quakes here near the Palomar Observatory. Uh, the San Andreas Fault looks pretty quiet for now. Uh, looking up further north, got a handful of quakes along the plate boundary. Slight uptick here across the Reno and Lake Tahoe area. Uh, but aside from that, things look... Uh, typical up there in northern california a little bit further up north here around mount st helens a little bit more activity uh continuing to add on to the uh list of earthquakes here just a real quick glance at the last this is going to be about the last two weeks that this is uh kicked up here in this swarm uh we're looking at well 100 and if you talk about the area around it too about 162 earthquakes around the mount st helens area the latest one uh, looks like a negative 0.1, but there's a 0.5 as well, right, right around 1 o'clock in the morning or so. Six kilometers deep. A uh, glance, let's go ahead and check out the Mount St. Helens activity up here, which is still currently green. It has not been elevated, and I don't see any reason to elevate it, uh, just because of the little earthquake activity, which a portion of it is being reported there by the USGS. There's the uh, latest map. Some of these, I'm not for certain what they are. They kind of look like earthquake activity, but uh, it looks like it's away from the station. Notice the thickness here. Localized earthquake activity is going to look like um, well, quite a few of these here. Some spikes, a couple more spikes here. You got that, you know, strong presence of a signature, and it looks like there's definitely been a handful or or two um, in that uh, last 24 hours. Sometimes we'll be able to see that activity show up on this station as well. There's another one. You can see pretty localized there. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that and uh, see how things play out there across the Mount St. Helens area. Further up north into the Mount Rainier and the rest of the Pacific Northwest. Pretty quiet. Again, I don't know why the USGS is not showing that activity offshore there. Off the Queen Charlotte Sound. But of course we got the EMSC on the globe to make sure we get notified on that. A little bit of movement across the Cook Inlet area of Alaska. Uh, further down, uh, let's double check Yellowstone here, see if we've got anything stirring up out here. 1.7 uh, earlier this morning, it looks like. We're going to go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview. And 
There's that little earthquake, very small amount of earthquake activity. Perfect. <laughs> it never fails. It's always one of those times that uh, I'm on the stream here. All right, so minimal activity at best here across the uh, Yellowstone region. Yesterday or last night, we did check this out. That's going to be those storms that rolled through. Not going to explain it too much again today, but that's what happened. Thunderstorms rolling through and uh, gives a little signature out there across the area. Uh, 2.5 outside of the Salt Lake City area near the Summit Park, Utah area. This is the mountain range up here. Uh, getting a little bit of activity. Uh, let's see, anything else going on out here? Ooh, okay, one earthquake. Almost right smack dab on the Kansas and the Oklahoma border. Manchester, Oklahoma to be exact. A little 1.4. And for the most part, just some general activity across the oil fields of Texas there, outside of Pecos, Texas. Got a little bit of movement down here across the divergent boundary in the Gulf of California, 4.0. That could spell a little bit of trouble here across the area. That's probably why we're seeing a little bit of uptick out here uh, across California now. 4.0 in the Mexico area, about 59 kilometers deep here. And let's see, we got anything major going on here across the south? A little bit of movement here in Colombia. Looks like a couple earthquakes there. Um, El Canton de San Pablo. <laughs> That's my English version there. 5.2, uh, about 7.30 this morning or so. Pretty shallow earthquake. Of course, we did see some movement a little bit further deeper down into this portion of the Colombian Trench. Notice these mountain ranges here built up due to the subduction zone. Deeper activity late last night followed up by surface activity uh, a few hours later. So it's very typical to see in a subduction zone if there's enough strain built up towards the surface. Chile area, wow, 3.7 being uh, mentioned there by the USGS, 67 kilometers deep. Uh, mixed bag of shallow and deeper movement quakes there across the area. But uh, goodness, look at the Western Pacific, is that right? So the EMSC here covers the globe um far as uh the smaller quakes go uh, usgs only reporting for the most part sometimes when they feel like it they'll put a three up here uh, but for the most part it's going to be 4.0 and above uh international and then of course the state's going to be all magnitudes but looking at the earthquake 3d globe here there's some smaller quakes out here in the three range and um those are being produced or um being reported by the emsc so it's not entirely quiet but it is so in terms of 4.0 and above for this area. Mediterranean area looks like a, a little bit of movement outside the Morocco area. Now I've seen a 5.0 on the globe. I don't know if uh, that's going to be the, uh, it looks like that's the EMSC reporting that. The USGS reporting a 4.6 in this area. Check out the world map here real quick and see what we got for this beautiful Thursday. Looks like there's somewhat of a larger quake aftershock in there. Um, I know that's not that 2.5, 4.6. So it looks like, it does look like something's going on with the EMSC when it comes to fixing their preliminary data. Most of the time this will get revised if a magnitude gets, you know, looked at and changed. But for whatever reason, on the Earthquake 3D globe here, wants to keep the original magnitude. That's why sometimes we'll see larger quakes around this area, but then they get downgraded on a map, but they still stick up here on the globe. So it's a little weird. Just, I do want to point that out sometimes when we see these earthquakes that are larger in magnitude than what their final uh, review was. <clears throat> All right. Uh, see what else we got middle america trench looks pretty active here today it's going to be this area here around the mexico region uh so we'll continue to watch that uh for some movement either way definitely super quiet out there for the western pacific uh let's see hawaii most of the movement here across pahala i'm sure we're still continuing there with the uh kilauea volcano eruption the latest information statement here from yesterday on Kilauea Volcano. And of course that was uh, continuing to erupt. Uh, you can check out all these webcam images and whatnot there at the Kilauea Volcano. They actually added quite a few here um, across the area. And I'm pretty certain they still have their live stream up there on YouTube. Uh, but it looks like the eruption is still ongoing. You can see the lava vents here. 
uh, up out of lava crater spewing up some hot material there in the red beautiful area uh well i should say beautiful scenery there from that uh, volcanic eruption and again it looks like most of the uh, uh all of it actually is confined to the crater lava lake area of kilauea volcano where it's been over the past couple eruptions here getting up there though starting to fill this area up all right uh, let's see what else we got here for space weather activity um we did see what looks like a long duration event here an m flare i uh, noticed that did peak up into the m flare category long duration i'm kind of curious to see what i think I was sleeping around that time um there's some auroras from uh the previous storm a uh, solar storm but i'm kind of curious about that one let me see what we got see where that came from got to go back a couple hours i suppose from the sdo data and uh we'll just see where this large m flare came from probably there's i think that was some yesterday right let's see here That's kind of weird. Just, <laughs> I don't know. My internet's been a little funny. There was something over. Oh, there it is. Look at that long duration M flare event. Of course, it's from that sunspot that, uh, you know, is now facing away from us. It was originally this one here. I believe this one, once it gets in position over here, will kick off that uh, M flare. I believe it's this one. Let's see here. Oh, it's kind of in between those two. Goodness, that was pretty crazy looking. Looks like a little sunspot here, but it created some type of huge arc, a long duration M flare event. Uh, it looks like maybe there was a CME produced with that. We'll have to check that out in the coming days, though, and see if... Uh, uh, I know it wasn't facing Earth directly, but sometimes we get clipped by these uh, CMEs. <clears throat> All right, 3423. That's going to be that regional sunspot way over here. It does look fairly dynamic. Uh, so we'll continue to watch out for some further flaring. This area, center disk of the sun, the earth-facing side is growing slightly as well. Notice the cores within this region showing quite a bit of structure and complexity within those magnetic colors there. And um, But that's about it. There's really not a whole lot further around the eastern limb of the sun. 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 5% chance. And again, we'll just uh, see if there's any CME that was produced with that long duration M flare. It kind of looks like it was. Uh, right now, looks like maybe a G1 storm potential stirring up here today. Does look like some slight elevated conditions here across the auroras on the unlit side, obviously, of Earth. Not on the North American continent yet, but as you can see, over across the dark side of the earth right here it's showing up slightly and at the polar regions down south across antarctica that uh is due to i don't know we've been getting these weird cmes lately just out of the blue the forecast has been all crazy here <clears throat> so watch for that uh, throughout the day today a little bit of activity jumping up storm prediction center not a whole lot of severe weather uh, definitely a lot of thunderstorm activity out here with a 2% chance of tornado probability. Uh, includes areas around Austin as well. Uh, Austin, Round Rock, Victoria, Cedar Park. Not a huge threat, but uh, t obviously Texas is capable of producing some tornadoes. So they'll probably maybe see a funnel or two, maybe tornado in that 2% zone. Uh, aside from that, uh, that looks like about the only main threat. Very minimal for wind and hail. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here, have a good day, and, um, you know, we'll just kind of watch this today and see what see what happens with this quiet activity out west uh, here across the western Pacific. I don't think New Zealand's seen anything. Let me double check and see. Sometimes they get quakes and, and um, nothing gets reported on them. Uh, best way to find out is check out the drums. And, I, goodness, it's about as quiet as can be for a plate boundary. Look at that. One little one locally. Uh, from almost 24 hours ago, but all the rest of the models out here 
are super duper quiet. Goodness. All right. Well, just stay safe out there, folks. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Have a good one.